My name is Estrogen, and this is a very special episode. And it is about the importance of representation and what it's like to be a Black skater in America. And the purpose of this podcast is to shine light and hope on all skaters, um, especially marginalized skaters. And um, I... Uh, I want to introduce you to some skaters that I work with that inspire me, that I consider family, and I also consider as very important stewards to carrying the message of love and inspiration and kindness in roller skating. And um, the roller skating community has given Moxie this uh, platform that I would like to um, pass the torch on to some black skaters that I feel have very important um, experiences and messages to share with the community to, um, to bring hope and love to a loving culture that everyone would like to be a part of. Um, I think right now it's a very important time to hear POC skaters of color and friends and I would like to pass this torch to Kiana as an ally, um, because I believe that it's important for allies to be silent and to listen. And I was so grateful to have the experience of attending a roll call that left me with what I would consider a transformational change. And um, I think with constant reinforcement of having more roll calls in the roller skating community, that can that change can be made um, through starting with this platform and with all of the platforms that the roller skating community builds. All right, Kiana. Thank you, Estro, and we're so grateful to have a platform to speak. And um, yeah, so. Um, First off, let's introduce everyone that's here on the podcast today. Um, my name is Kiana. I go by they, them pronouns. And um, the next person is going to go, and that is Shove. Hi, everyone. I'm Courtney Shove. I go by Shove, aka Girl, Fat Girls Moxie. And I go by she, they. Hey, I'm Missy Savage. Um, and my pronouns are uh, she, her. Hi, I'm Savvy, uh, also known as Savvy Craft. My pronouns are they, them. And my name is Abominatrix. I go by she, her. Happy to be here. Awesome. So I just wanted to talk about this podcast a little bit. And just like Esther said, this podcast is to shine a light and hope to the community. Um, we are trying to uplift and celebrate skaters as well as, um, you know, just kind of bring hope into the community, talk about what's going on. And, you know, from all of us Black skaters, we want to personally share our experiences and, you know, how we just feel in the community. Um, as far as that, we're having a vulnerable conversation. Again, this is our personal experiences. Um, we know that we aren't with recent events. Um, some of us aren't the ones who were directly affected or involved into what had recently happened. Um, but this is where we feel that we would like to still start a conversation and just talk about um, how we feel about the community and also bring help to more people who might be feeling, you know, down, frustrated, all of those things. Um, we would in the future like to involve more people. So those that were, you know, directly involved in things that happened in the community and would like to personally speak up. So please know that this is a this is going to be a continuation of other things. This isn't going to be the end. And we're always going to need to speak up in the community. We need to keep people accountable and we need to, you know, keep our voices heard and make sure that happens. And um, with that, I want to go ahead and introduce someone who was a big role in an event that um, I and Shev and Estro um, were a part of. It was called Roll Call. And I want to go ahead and pass it off to Missy so that um, she can talk about it a little more. Thank you, Kiana, um, for those great words. You very well said. Um, so roll call was an experience. Neon um, is a skater uh, and a friend. 
of mine. It was her idea to create an event with um, Skate Witch to try to bring everyone together that is a person of color, that is just a BIPOC 100% because we don't even know who we are, like who, who's around us. Like it's hard to find one another. And we wanted to create an open space to where we could talk about our experiences that only we can relate to with each other. And it was a really awesome time. It was summertime. Skate Witch opened up her entire backyard and home to everybody that showed up. And it was a phenomenal experience. Um, we sat down and we gathered and we led an open discussion but allowed everyone to speak. And I can't say how important that was, just that alone. Because growing up, at least for me, being interrupted or you know not being taken seriously enough to be heard was definitely a struggle to always deal with. And to be able to have a platform where everyone, no matter what skill level you were, you could say something and no matter how known you were, you could say something and everyone would listen. Um, it was a life-changing moment for a lot of people. A lot of people didn't realize how much things actually happened that they've never experienced before um, as, you know, as an ally. And they were finally able to understand how we, our, our thought processes and how we break that down and how we can approach it within the community to make it better. And that's where a lot of us rose out from the ashes and you know, wanted to have a presence online so that people could see that, hey, you can skate and look like me too. You know, it's hard finding role models. Like I remember the first time I came across Shove, you know, and it was just like, yes, you know, like and we're not alone out there. And like gave inspiration to not only me, but like my sister and to make her skate again. Like she didn't want to put on skates forever, but you know, like rambling, but anyways, like it's really important. And it brought a lot of people together. We had a lot of good conversations and important conversations about community and what that means and backing each other and making sure, you know, we're not getting pushed around and that we are here and we are present and we want to be shown across billboards like everyone else, but not to be idolized because of our skin color or glorified or, you know, put into a sexual window because that's how only people can see us is through that one lens, you know, and having that opportunity to be truly diverse in different companies and just to see you know, put that out there in people's minds. Like, mm -hmm. isn't it weird that we're not in things? Isn't it weird that you only see white girls all the time on skates? You know, like what would have that meant for you if you were a younger girl and you saw you out there? Would you have tried harder? Would you have thought it was actually something you could do other than just a hobby or that you could do it at all because you saw someone doing it that was your size? Like. It, 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 was, it was really important just to have that grounds to speak about those things. And Roll Call accomplished that. And the whole goal of Roll Call was to create more Roll Calls everywhere, more frequently, because everyone needs to have that sit down and open up about the things that have either happened to you that have shaped your life and why. Like you wonder why some of us have such hard shells because there's stories behind those shells. There's trauma, there's sadness, but there's also strength and resilience and determination and balls. You know what I mean? Like we've got gumption like some other sometimes. We got that moxie, you know what I mean? Like it's so important that everyone can feel that way. And you don't feel that way until you have that community to, to lead you and guide you with. And that's what Roll Call accomplished. Thank you so much for that, Missy, and telling us about Roll Call, how much it meant, and just, you know, really what it was about. 
Um, and just to add on to that roll call can mean so many different things. It doesn't take but one person with the idea to want to help the community to do a roll call event, just like we're doing podcasts here. Um, I've hosted a roll call rollout before, um, you know, a bunch of people did the roll call event. Um, if you want to strengthen the community, have a safe space for people, you can also do roll call in whatever way that you would like. Um, so I just wanted to add that on there because um, it really does just take one person with the heart to, um, you know, make the community a better place. So um, next topic that we're going to talk about. So um, might get emotional here. I know I will at least, but uh, we want to share our experiences as people of color and skaters. And we're just going to go ahead and go in order here. So um, Chef, go ahead and tell us about uh, your experience in the community. Hey guys. So, well, for me, I started skating, went straight into derby. Um, and anyone that knows anything about derby knows that derby has a dark history <laughs> as well as other part of skating with racism, whether it's calling skaters by the wrong color um, just because of their jersey um, and other things like that. But mostly it's like I've gone to practice and it was like little comments that it was me and one other black girl. And so it was always like, oh, we have one and a half black people in our league. Ha ha ha. Like I don't count as like a full black. Um, or just like sexualized comments, as you said, like, oh, like she has that black booty, like, well, it's always like something attached with your race attached to everything else. So it was always like, okay, minority again, but I pushed through, um, from other aspects to like going on trips to Woodward with people from my Derby league. And then them saying like, I don't even want to repeat it right now, but it's just like extremely racist things than just thinking it's okay but then I look around and I'm the only black person and then maybe two Latinx people and I'm like this isn't appropriate but like we're so used to just ignoring these comments and letting them slide um because people think skating is just so happy and freeing which it is to an extent but it's still just a microcosm of the real world and racism does exist so for me, when I went to roll call, it was the first time actually in my whole life really, because I've always lived in spaces where there weren't too many people of color, um, that I was actually surrounded by that many people of color and like was embra embraced. And I felt like I finally had a home. And I just remember like hearing other people's pain and like crying so hard and feeling that bond of like, we often just sweep these things under the table like it never happened. And we finally had this opportunity to speak them and put that power out. And it was like, I don't know, like people say, like going to church, like letting their soul out. And that's what it really felt like. And it was definitely like, I don't know. It was like, I came back as a changed person. And I was like, I'm going to make change. Like, I think I always was like, fought. Oh, sorry, I'm going to start crying. Okay. So like that positivity was always my thing, but it was like a reminder of like being proud of who I am as a black woman and also like pushing for those rights as well. But yeah, so definitely it still is alive and well, and like things that have been happening are proof that there's still work to done to be done. But that's why we're here to like open this conversation and be like, we see you, we hear you, and we're gonna support you and just make sure that roll call doesn't die out, that it's gonna be ongoing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chef, for that. Um, I'm definitely gonna cry, I've realized so. <laughs> Um, the next person that we want to have talk is going to be um, Missy. All right. Hey. Um, whew. Man. It's so, it, it, it's so, it's so much every time. Just like recapturing. There's so much emotion in my chest right now. <laughs> but um, I started skating much like Shove with Derby. Um, if we're going to take it really back, you know, I was borrowing my sister's inline skates that were way too big, you know, forever until my parents bought me some Skechers roller skates. You know what I mean? But it died off because I didn't get a lot of uh, support from my parents. And I reconnected with myself. 
when I joined Derby and it was the best thing I ever did. And uh, I wanted to live again, you know? And I met such an amazing group of women and friends that I, you know, can call, you know, my surrogate mothers at this point. And there's something that roller skating brings to you that you just can't get anywhere else, which is what's so great about this community. Uh, but growing up in a really predominantly white area, it's really hard to believe in yourself, to wanna to try to do anything, because you don't look like them. I don't have straight hair, even though I tried, with a million relaxers and burning my scalp until I had scabs on it for like a week straight. You know what I mean? Everybody knows the gag. But um, overall, I never thought that I would run into the issues that I would read about because everyone was so high and mighty and they're like, oh yeah, you know, we love everybody. We're so inclusive, you know, that doesn't happen here. And I believed it. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's awesome. You know, I can finally feel in included in something. And then, you know, a few years in, people change and you get new people in and, Next thing you know, there's like a mean girl packed and you got bullies and it's, it's intense. And it didn't get bad until I was called the color of my skin instead of the yellow jersey that I was wearing and the yellow and pink scrimmage. No black involved whatsoever. But they call me black 68 and repeat it twice. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it happened and they were sorry. And, you know, you go down that road and they try their best to, you know, amend the situation. And I'm thankful that my league handled it the way that they did, but I'm not always, not everyone is always that lucky. Half the time you hear horror stories all day long about how terrible it is and about how sometimes you're not black enough like being being mixed my whole life. I've never felt, you know, you're you're not enough this, you're not enough that. You know, I've got Mexican and Portuguese descent and I don't know Spanish because my mom refused to teach me. You know what I mean? Because she wanted to fit in with the neighbors. And just like being a skater has changed my life and the community within is so strong and we have the ability to overcome and outreach and connect with so many people. And I've met so many close friends. I've never had colored friends because they just didn't live in my area. And having that capability and being able to talk with other people and talk about these experiences that only you as a colored person is gonna understand is a blessing in disguise. And I always feel like, oh my God, I, you need to be, you know, come, come in this group or, you know, we talk in here, you know what I mean? Like introducing people to groups that you know online where other skaters can collect. Like, I almost wanna be like, oh my God, please tell everyone that you know that's a skater that's colored so that you know you're not alone. Like that's, and we shouldn't have to feel that way. Like we should automatically feel included, but I'm grateful that we have that opportunity. And that's all I gotta say. Thank you so much, Missy. Um, the next person that we're gonna have speak is gonna be uh, Savvy. Hi, so um, I, uh, growing up, I had a particular thing where I didn't like getting into any kind of activities or group things that were popular because usually if it was popular, it meant that I couldn't find people who were like me, um, unfortunately, um, in these communities. And it wasn't until I joined the roller skating community three years ago um, and made my Instagram account and started reaching out and actively looking for um, other skaters who shared my experiences um, 
that I truly felt like I had a voice and <clears throat> oh sorry um I'm just so overwhelmed with emotion because just all these feelings and my experiences these past three years have just kind of <sighs> it's been a lot but um when it when it comes to being a black skater um I often feel like I don't get to experience as many of the um, freedoms and privileges that many other skaters get to um, experience. Uh, unfortunately, once when I was um, roller skating one night with some friends, um, we were crossing the street when it said to cross on our roller skates and it was nighttime and there were no other cars around except for a police SUV that was sitting there across this intersection waiting for us to get in the middle of the road who then revved its engines and nearly hit us while we were roller skating. And it was that moment that I realized that I don't, I would never ever feel comfortable skating alone, let alone, you know, I never expected something to happen to me like this um, with friends and with people there to witness it. Um, and it just kind of was a reality check for me that even though I like found a community that I felt so connected to. And, you know, as soon as you bring up roller skating with somebody else who knows roller skating, like there's an instant connection, you know? Um, but I, I've unfortunately realized that that's not the case with everybody who enjoys what you enjoy. Um, they're not always gonna understand your experiences and they're not always going to care necessarily, unfortunately, is um, the reality of it. But what I think is super important alongside the, the, the sad and the um, hurt is the amazing people and the amazing friends and connections that you get to make with all of these amazing people who understand, they get where you're coming from. Um, and I think I can honestly say it's probably saved me multiple times. <laughs> and I'm sure it saved many other people. And I'm really, really thankful for that. And I'm really thankful for my friends. And I, I can say that as a black person, whether it's skating or whatever activity, things are gonna be tough. They're gonna be tougher. Um, but I am glad that I can find a voice somewhere and I can find a platform within a community that does actually care and does actively strive um, to do better, to learn and to protect those who need protection more so than others. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Savvy. The next person we're gonna have to speak is Avon. Thank you so much, Savvy, for sharing with us and Missy and Shove. Like, I'm honored to be here with you all. Um, I'm, I'm a mixed girl who, is passing. Do you know what I mean? Like it's really frustrating to see people that I empathize with and intrinsically relate to be marginalized systemically as if it's fine, no big deal, it's okay. It, that casual, cavalier attitude enrages me. It makes me so upset and fills me with pain. And then it's paralyzing, because what do you do? Like, do I disrupt everything and flip this table right now? Or do I pull it together and walk away? Keeping myself protected for what? For, for what? It's not fair. It bothers me. And as a skater, as a mixed girl, like I started doing this to find 
empowerment for myself because I felt so isolated and just different and not any one thing undefinable. That's a strength and a power in and of itself. But to when you fit into one thing, people assume a lot about you and will discredit this other th- side about you. Like when you're passing people, passing is just for people who may not know is when you are a mixed person of like an ethnicity and you look white or you look enough of what this other person is comfortable with so a lot of times people will assume that I'm white or will assume that I'm whatever they're comfortable with and will forget or assign what they think that I am for what's comfortable to them. And oftentimes that leads to not really being fully understood and also people saying and doing things in front of you. That's pretty, I'm not going to say it messed up. I'm not going to drop a cuss word right now or anything like that. Um, But it's, it's pretty messed up the stuff that you start to see. So being in this position, I can see how people are behaving and I can see what people are up to and I can see injustice and it's frustrating to be in a position where um, you're unsure of what to do or how to take action or what to say or where to throw a red flag up or where to rescue or, or stop people or what have you. So for me as a skater in Derby, I found myself putting my neck out quite a bit um, and having doors shut in my face because I stood up for people who were being marginalized or treated badly in Derby. I would witness the black Jersey mistaken for the color of your skin when there's no black Jersey involved whatsoever. Or even if there is a black Jersey that's on the opposing team, but the the girl (laughs) is wearing a white shirt and they're being like black 42. And it's like, come on, we know what you're doing. Um, and it's frustrating because you get labeled a troublemaker maker, you get labeled a loud mouse, you get labeled all of these things where you're no longer accepted and you get pushed out. And that to me is something that I've witnessed in, in the skate community, because even though we have skates on our feet, we're still human beings. And though when we skate, we're doing something that is, um, that something that we're all taking up. Um, people are also bringing their baggage and their perspectives into that scenario as well. So racism, systemic or not, most definitely is this. And to pretend that it doesn't and to silence people who are experiencing true pain when they're out in a community going about their business the way that any other white girl would be doing, And to silence that is just simply unfair, unjust. And I'm putting my neck out on the line. And I realize the repercussions of it could be something where, again, get rid of her, troublemaker, loud mouth. Mm -mm -mm. Um, But I've always felt that my position in the skate community has been a long quest for change to uplift to represent culture, to represent different people. And that's why I'm here. And while my position uh, with employment and jobs have shifted, that's my goal and will always be my goal is to represent my culture that I'm a part of, my community that I'm a part of and roller skating. Um, I can be either somebody who passes and sits quietly, or I can be a vessel for change and growth. I can be a witness of injustice and not stay silent because silence is a sinister tool. And we shouldn't pretend that it's not. And, um, 
I just recently had an experience where I was skating with a friend of mine. He's a beautiful black man who I wish was my husband, but he's not. I also love my husband, but um, my friend Carlin is a beautiful man, very sweet, a generous father, very kind man. Um, and we skate together often. And it's always a fun experience when you have people who you just vibe with, that you just can skate with and be truly yourself. That's a treasure. And he's a treasure. He's a true gem. And we were skating and we had to stop because we needed water and we needed food. We were so hungry. We'd been skating all day. And we stopped at a restaurant and went inside. And um, he had gone inside just before me. He purchased his food already and he was sitting outside. And I ordered the same exact thing. And I went inside and it was promptly served and it was very nice and I ran into a little girl who was like roller skates because yes I was on my skates and uh shared with her some information about skating and resources online for learning and uh finished my order went outside and realized what I had ordered was the same thing that my friend Carlin had ordered but what he had ordered they only gave him half a portion while they gave me a full portion and when I went back inside to kind of follow up on it and learn a little bit more about it, he was still outside. And I was talking to the girl and she was being incredibly helpful and very courteous to me and even uh, assisted me very closely throughout this, um, this time that we're in where we're really trying to keep distance. She wanted to really help me and be there and be present and be helpful. And as soon as he walked in the door, her and the other person who was attending the restaurant immediately prickled up and was like, that homeless guy is back again. Ew. And I was like, uh, that guy? And they're like, yeah. Ugh. And I was like, well, I was following up on my order. I had gotten two samosas. He only got one. We paid for the same thing. You guys are treating him kind of weird. That's my husband. I just claimed that he was with me because I didn't know what else to do in the scenario. I went full extreme and was like, that's my man. You're treating him poorly. Shame on you. How dare you? I've given you money. I tipped you. You were extremely nice to me. You're treating him like a homeless man. This is the kind of thing that happens on a daily basis to people of color, whether they're skating or not daily basis, small little things. Ew, homeless guy. Ew, they're saying a thing that we don't like. Ew, let's get rid of it. Hurry up and get out of here. Delete, ban, delete, ban. Sick of it. That's all I'll say. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for talking. And um, now I'm gonna go ahead and speak about my experience um, in my community. Um, so I have notes, so if I'm looking down, I'm just reading notes. Um, just like Avon said, I feel like I'm white passing a lot of the time too. And um, I think after coming from roll call, I, I don't know. I started out doing roller skating by derby and honestly I've blacked out that part of skating. Um, I was super young and very naive and I feel like I've grown since then. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you exact situations, but I can tell you that I was definitely one of the only, at the time I, my identity, I gender assigned as female, but I could tell you that I was the only black female there um as far as I you know went to practice and stuff like that with I didn't really have any friends that were people of color um as far as black specifically either and that's again growing up in a neighborhood where it's not diverse it's mostly white people and it's so hard when that happens too because I lived in Boise Idaho for forever and I did not honestly see that many black people in school or anything like that and when you're raised with you know only half of your culture it's really hard to it's really hard to relate more into your life because if you're not started if you haven't started out basically with that culture it's also hard to be accepting in the black culture sometimes too and then also when you're mixed it's hard to be accepted in the white white culture too 
So it's really hard because you're kind of just stuck in the middle, like, well, okay, where do I go? And so you kind of almost have to create your own culture, I guess. And I chose roller skating and I freaking love roller skating because it's obviously brought me to all these people that I'm speaking with right now who have inspired me, who have taught me and helped me be more vocal. Um, I definitely in the roller skate scene, like, and everyone can learn this to speak up and, you know, have more courage to do so. But I'm definitely a lot more vocal now than I was when I first started. And I feel like a lot of that is being naive and like not realizing that like, wow, this person is calling me a bad word, but like, oh, they're, it's fine. They're nice. Everyone does that. It's not, they're messing with me. They're not doing that to hurt me, but I've literally had people call me the N word and they were just like, oh, it's just a word. Like, don't worry about it. And I was like, all right, I guess I don't like, don't know how to handle this because you're my friend. I don't have any other person to go to. And don't say that word basically if you're not black is what I'm gonna say um but I'm going off my notes um but I just want to say that like people um who are black have to work twice as hard to be seen especially on social media that we're being oppressed by and it's very frustrating because being someone who's on TikTok or places who have literally stated that they oppress people or oppress you know black people it's so frustrating and again we have to work so much harder and it's just think about that. Like if you're trying to diverse, diversify your social media, figure out why you're not seeing black skaters. Like I literally have to do the work to be able to see skaters or like, for example, the people on this um, chat right now, like sometimes disappear from my feed. Why is that when I constantly interact with them all the freaking time? It's so frustrating. And I just want to see a community that's accepting of everyone. And I think when I first started skating in general, like skate parks and stuff like that, again, I was the only person out there of my skin color who I felt like I was black, at least I identify as black. And, you know, maybe people see me as white passing, so they don't come up and talk to me or they don't think that I'm going to share an experience with them. But I don't know. It's just hard, like Avon said. And I honestly really relate with you and thinking about it more because I see where I have privilege in a sense. And then I also see where people aren't accepting when I tell them that I'm black. And I've had so many people ask me, you know, like, are you a mutt? Like, what are you? Like, you're clearly something. And it's like, well, okay, I identify as black. And then they'll say, you're definitely more than that. No, I'm white and I'm black. I don't know what you want me to respond with. And just like Chef said, you get called like the person with the big booty or whatever. And it's like those certain physical aspects that are, I guess, related with the black genetics that you have to point us out for, which is so ridiculous. And I don't know, it's just really frustrating. And I just hope that as a person in my community, I can, you know, really share these experiences. If I'm more privileged than other people, I would like to be able to, you know, share those experiences and um, let people speak and make people aware of the situations going on because it's hard to go to bed at night when your your family's literally being killed in the world and it's hard to do normal things when that's on your mind all the time and it's hard because if I'm white passing and I have a white friend in the car and a cop rolls up, like who's going to be the person who's going to get shot? It's definitely going to be me and not them. And seeing myself as white passing sometimes still, am I or am I not? Like, it's just really frustrating. So I just hope that this helps people in the, communicate, in the community be educated and just hear us. Please just hear us and please know that we're here. And also, Another thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, give us a platform to speak, give us a chance to let our voices be heard, our uh, ideas to be seen, and don't steal from us. That's That would be something that I would love for people to stop doing. Um, you know, credit people for things. Um, what Like, I see things shared all the time on Instagram, and the person's not tagged, and it's like, especially if that's coming from a black person of skater, you want to uplift them. So please do that. Um, that I, that happens to me all the time and it's really frustrating. Um, I think I'm going off topic, but that's,
pretty much what I have to say about that. Um, our next topic that we're going to talk about is how can the community do better? And we really want you to just listen, hear us, and please do these things that we're asking of you. Um, and we're literally telling you what to do. So, you know, if you don't know what to do, do these things. And if you're not going to do them, then that really just shows us um, how willing you are to help out people of color in the community and how much you care. So, um, Shev, if you want to talk about that. Well, there's a saying that we all know um, that when you're black, you have to work twice as hard for half the payoff. And all these people come to us like, you black person, tell me how not to be racist. Tell me what book I should read. Tell me this, tell me that. What do you think I should post? Um, what can you proofread this? Like, can you do all this? It's like all of a sudden it's like you, you're the speaker for the whole culture, right? um no so <laughs> why don't you work twice as hard to find the answer basically um a lot of times I'll offer it up if I see someone they're, they're questioning I might offer it like hey I'm gonna let this be a safe space what do you want to know but you can't expect all your black friends to be like that um for me I think the biggest thing is literally you google everything else you go on youtube and look for anything else the information's out there you're just not trying to look for it so the first thing is like hmm am i racist the answer usually is yes you just <laughs> not racist i think people hear the word racist and they get defensive and they silence it out and it's it's something systematic it's something that's born in all of us even black people can be racist against other minorities so i think people are afraid and they get defensive and then that stops the whole research like well i'm not racist i don't need to learn about this that's not true it's something we're born and it's ingrained because of the behaviors of people around us so if you go and research like even whether it's other black people or other white people that have done the research, like I believe Jane Elliott um, has been doing it since the 60s, you can find all these studies and check your privilege and realize, and if you don't want to read a book, there's podcasts out there, there's books on tape, there's so many resources out there for you. Don't rely on the marginalized people to let you that holds the power know how to fix it identify those issues in you and once you identify them be like okay why do i feel this way though and dig a little deeper you'll find the answer so what we need in this community specifically is representation matters i say it all the freaking time i can't say it enough so what you need to do is like think about like when you are like with your it's first of all do you have a, any people in your life that are of color that's a problem we're here there's that's part of systematic racism like and i'll see people that are definitely friends with people of color and other white people yet they're only posting pictures on their instagram with their other white friends whether they know it or not or their other skinny friends and that's something inside they're like this is more aesthetically pretty and fits in the little box and this will trend better and it's no that's not what it is it's uplifting your friends of color or maybe like not being afraid of like you see that group of people of color but you're something inside of you is afraid to go talk to them why aren't you approaching them the same way then when it comes to companies it's even bigger it's like they have to do the work and make sure it's weird because you don't want to be like i'm tokenizing i'm forcing people of color as advertising but you still have to do the work and make sure you are putting people of color. So it's kind of like a, a tough place, but you have to put the work and it's not like, oh, I did that thing. And now we're more, we're inclusive now. It's like, no, it's ongoing. It's ongoing until you die. You're always doing the work. You're always thinking like, wait, did I make sure I invited those other people of color like to the thing? Like, why is this picture? Everyone looks the same. This is not inclusive. It's something that should always be aware of. So whether it's like a skate company or a clothing company, whatever it is, like, is, are you there? Because once you break that will and you're like, I have people of color on my site. I have people that are like different sizes, all the things, anything marginalized, you kind of like break that algorithm and then it starts showing up more. So I think it's up to us to do the work. And when I say us, it's not just us as black people that are like here, like telling you like, this is how you do it. It's us as a community. And this isn't just in the skate community, this is everywhere. But let us start small, let us start in the skate community. We have the power. This is, especially if you're a new skater watching this, you're probably like, what the heck's going on? I thought it was just gonna be cute girls skating around in short shorts and like having time of life on these pretty skates. 
it's more than that. The skate community does not forget. The skate community will forgive you if you do the work. The skate community will catch you when you fall because we're constantly encouraging you to knock yourself into a wall and jump off a ramp into or into a bowl. And then we're encouraging you that for trying it. We just want you to try and we'll catch you when you fall. But we have to see that you deserve for us to catch you when you fall. And that's all I really have to say about that. <laughs> Thank you, Shav, for speaking and telling the community some things that they can do. Um, We'd love to hear from Missy and please tell us what the community can do for us. Thanks, Kiana. Um, so definitely so much, so much yes to what Shove just said. Um, and like, honestly, I'm right. Like half of what I was gonna say is like definitely what she said, but <laughs> um, representation matters so hard and i just need to echo that um you need to be able to see yourself like they tell you and they preach to you uh, throughout grade school about role models and you know having goals and how can you have a goal if you've never even seen anybody do it that looks like you like i i grew up in an area where there was a girl with thick thighs i was the I was the fat girl and it's sad that I made myself feel that way. Like I put myself so low for no reason, just because they made me feel that way. And that's wild. You know what I mean? And it's like how you like, you, you would change your hair, try to have straight hair. I mean, obviously I mentioned that two times now, like it's probably affected me just a little bit. <laughs> um, but you know, it's wild because then, they want to touch your hair. It's curly now. You know, I've learned how to love myself and show appreciation for my culture and the things that it's given me. And you want to not even ask to touch my hair and just like, it's not yours. Like, you don't get to do that. My hair means more to me than just something on top of my head. You know, that's a spiritual connection with me and my culture on all sides. You know, being Native American and being Black like don't mess with that you know and people don't even like oh well, i didn't even think about that you know what i mean it's like well why why didn't you take the time to think about it or use the right words there are so many words out there like words matter like don't just don't just say anything and don't try to sugarcoat it if i'm going to share something with you or you're going to ask me a question don't try to sugarcoat your answer back to me or, you know, finish the conversation because you think that's, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? But like enough of that, own your shit. If you don't know, I'm sorry, uh, own it. You know what I mean? Like just, <laughs> everyone knows I'm terrible with that, but you know, own it because we don't have the emotional energy to deal with you not knowing all the time. And I think as the community, the best thing that you can do is involve yourself. You know, if you don't skate with someone that is of color, why not? Is that because your community doesn't promote that it's a safe environment for them to skate in? Like really dig into that. Why do you not see colored skaters in your area, at your skate park, on your trails, on your streets? Like I know I wouldn't be able to street skate in Virginia because they don't treat skaters like they do bicyclists. You know, they give them respect. They, you know, think we don't deserve to be on the road. And it's even more so as a person of color. You know, I live in country area and there are people that walk into town from the country area. It's about like five or so miles up a straight road. And you will clearly see multiple occasions them near get hit and someone on a bike to where they'll slow down their car and of course it's a it's a person it's a white person on the bike you know it's it's always you see they give respect and you just see small fractions and instances where you're like that should apply to both parties but it doesn't and that happens in the skate park that happens everywhere where 
you're being the one that has the skate etiquette. You're the one that's being respectful and letting the dudes do their lines or whoever do their lines. And they act like you don't exist because they don't want to give you the time of day, you know? And I feel like it's important to have people that you can roll up with, you know, finding your own community within and people that got your back. So, hey, no, she was going to go or they were going to go or telling that kid, you know, that's just doesn't know how to share. Hey, man, you got to share. You know what I mean? And like teaching them being that teacher since their parents don't want to be or they neglected them and left them just hang out at the park for hours because, you know, we all know those kids. They happen. <laughs> but ultimately, like what the community, what the blah, 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 what the community can do is educate themselves really take the time i i hate to say it, but like read a book like m yeah maybe ask your friend about it but i'd rather you ask me about something in a book that way i don't have to spend the exhausted time that someone already took the entire years probably worth of their life to write down in that book you know if you're gonna go read a book then you best read five or six or 10 while you're at it. You know what I mean? Like educate yourself. You don't know, well, I don't get it. I hate people that, that say that I don't get it. You know, oh, well, mm, it's just why it's always gotta be about this. Well, the reason why it's gotta be about this is because every time we bring it up, you wanna avoid it. So this is us saying, you're gonna pay their respect and time so that we can talk about this. And that's what it means to be a POC in your community and say something and be, you know, like it's an honor to be able to be seen by the skate community as a person of color. I, I feel so privileged. Like, what did I do to get here? Other than just be myself and try to share that with other people. Because at the end of the day, I just want you to skate. I want you to feel that magical, blissful feeling that you just don't get anywhere else than on your wheels. It's like, get harassed the other day, like I did, go for a skate. You feel so much better afterwards. You know what I mean? And that's, it's nice to have that, but it means even more when you have a community underneath that to strengthen that layer, to, really make you feel like you're not alone. And yeah, that, that does happen and it is wrong. And you shouldn't feel bad about sharing your emotions because it's hard sometimes because you want to regret it. You know, I'd, I've shown my vulnerability, that's a no-no. I've been taught not to, not to show that and there's nothing wrong with me. I don't know about anyone else, but it was a really, hard press set you don't leave the house without makeup or good clothes on like you always make sure you're head to toe you know what i mean looking fine so that no one thinks that you're anything else other than what you look like you have to show them what they want i felt like a walking billboard as a child you know what i mean and you shouldn't have to feel that way no one should have to feel that way segregated into a certain section or left in limbo like how Kiana mentioned before, like, am I, am I Spanish enough? Am I black enough? They don't think so. They don't think so. I'm just this person that hangs out, you know? And it's like, where do you go with that? You know, you feel lost. You don't have cultural norms that people have, you know, what do you eat at Christmas and things like that. And you know what I mean? It's, it's hard when you don't have the answers. Or when someone always asks me, oh, well, you're Spanish, why don't you speak Spanish? Or, you know what I mean? Like, why aren't you bilingual? Shouldn't you be bilingual? Yeah, I probably should. But, you know, unfortunately, my childhood wasn't blessed like, you know, most people that get that opportunity. And at the end of the day, I think the best thing we can do is just support the people within your community learn from them, skate with them, hear their stories of their childhood and what it was like to grow up. Like that's, that's it. Like just hear them out. Like their childhood stories are enough to just explain 
why they take things the way that they do. Like, if you ever wonder why someone is such a hard shell, just think about what did you experience in your life to always have that guard up or to always feel that way, to respond in that type of manner. Like, be considerate of others. Treat others how you would want to be treated. Like, everyone taught, was taught that in grade school. I'm, I'm almost positive. And if you haven't, then you can learn at any given time. That's the beauty of being a human ever evolving and at the I, I keep on saying at the end of the day but like <laughs> like just support each other and stop trying to sugarcoat what's actually there and that's racism exists it's been there it's always been there it's only getting worse so do something about it from your point of view everyone always wants to say that oh well I can't do anything yeah you can Every time that your grandma or your brother or your dad says something that's racist, call them out. Don't let them sit there and, you know, just say whatever they want because, oh, well, they're old. Well, they can learn at any age because humans are ever evolving. So get to learning and stop being negligent and rude and disrespectful and treat others like you want to be treated. That's what I got. Thank you so much, Missy. Um, Savvy, want to add on to our conversation? Please. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> um, so along with what Missy and Shav were saying, it, it's, it's really important to educate yourself. Um, not everybody has the emotional energy or the energy, physical energy that it takes to educate you on something that you can literally take five seconds to Google to find out a basis about the problem. Like realize that you have that ability to search for something and educate yourself. You have that privilege to educate yourself. And instead of denying it and instead of trying to push it off, use it for good, use it to uplift people. Um, you know, uh, a lot, just like how skating works, you know, you start skating, you know, you don't, I, a lot of people don't think they're very good when they first start skating, but you, you go for it and you get better. You keep doing it and you get better. And you can ask any skater, any skater in the world, if they know everything there is to know about skating. If there is, they know every trick, if they can land anything as soon as you tell them to do it. I don't. I don't know any, I don't know, I, I, I have never tried that, but I don't know if there's any skaters like that. And they, they're never gonna be, there's never gonna be that perfect skater. Just the same as there's never gonna be that perfect person who doesn't slip up or who doesn't, you know, cause microaggressions. But what you do, when you do that, your actions afterwards will always speak way louder than anything you could ever say. And, I think when it comes to especially people in the skate community who have influence, where a lot of people look up to a lot of these skaters, um, I think it's important that, you know, they wouldn't have this influence if it weren't for the skate community. You, you owe the skate community, you know, protection. You, you should take care of them. You don't silence them. You don't brush them off. You don't hide them away. You love them, you cherish them, and you celebrate them. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. That's where a lot of people think that they can't make up for some of their past actions. While sometimes your actions can never be fixed with words, and maybe it can never be fixed at all, you can do something to something that's the opposite of the hurt you caused. If you silence a bunch of black skaters about a topic and you are truly sorry, you truly realize how that's wrong, don't give me an excuse about it. Don't give anybody an excuse. Nobody wants to hear excuses. Nobody cares about the excuse. The intent doesn't mean anything if it's still hurting people. Just because you didn't mean to step on my toes doesn't mean my toes aren't broken. 
and what you can do to help mitigate the hurt that you've caused is by giving back to the people you're hurting. It takes five seconds to Google black charities, local charities, whatever, make a donation, go help that community. If you're so sorry about your actions, you can uplift black skaters and other black creators and just anybody who has to do with what you care about, uplift them because the world is trying its hardest to push them down. And it's, it's hard, it's hard to get, it's hard to get up back up with everybody else when every, when the odds are stacked, stacked against you, you know? And, and that's what it means to be an ally. That's what it means to care about your peers and, and care about your community. It means to listen to them, to educate yourself, to swallow the hard truths. Growing hurts. Growing's always gonna hurt. You should be thankful for that. Because that means it's important. I believe that's probably my stance on the matter. That's about what I have to say. Thank you so much, Savvy, for speaking and again telling you know the community what we can do and much more than that. Um, a bomb. Let's hear from you. Again, I feel completely blessed to be sharing this platform with you all. Savvy, yes. Missy, yes. Courtney, shove, hell yeah. And Kiana, most definitely. Um, I wanna touch on some things real quick. Uh, I've been dying to be in the skate industry since I put my skates on for the first time. And um, once I realized that it could be not only a vessel for me to like physically learn something more about myself, I realized that community wise, like it was really taking me to a place where I could connect with people. And um, it saddens me to see right now things that I've been, I've been seeing for at least the last two years. And um, definitely beyond that and other, and other places, but within this scope, within this reality, within these platforms that are currently available to people to learn and be exposed to roller skating. I've seen it. And um, I don't think that it's fair. I don't think that it would be right for me to not just remind people that the execution of creating an adult page, an adult night, a separation of demographics, that is segregation. Let's keep it real. It's inappropriate. Oopsies, accident, my bad. Ooh, <laughs> I posted an, an apology. Not okay. How fucking, how dare you? Pardon me. How, how dare you? Black youth in America today are exposed to racism at a very young age. I got the talk when I was like seven. You know what the talk is? People of color in the chat, people of color watching, you know what the chat is. The chat is where you get sat down as a child. You're in elementary school, maybe, you, maybe you're in kindergarten, maybe you're in first grade, maybe you're in third grade, but you're getting that talk where you're being sat down and being brought into the reality of the fold of the life that you live. And the reality is you are unheard, you are marginalized, you will receive unfair treatment. You, if you are a little boy, you run the risk of being incarcerated. Your life is instantly political, instantly. And to be dictated to, 
that your life, your naturally political expression of breathing air is too much for your community to bear, please take a seat in silence, in segregation on this adult page. That's where you can be. That's where you can congregate with your music. That's where you can safely talk. I'm tired of safe spaces. We live in an unsafe space. That's the reality. We live in an unsafe space. It's uncomfortable. It's, it is what it is. Oops, cat's out of the bag. Safe spaces don't exist. What I want you to know is that in my heart and in my perception, you matter and it's okay to be who you are in this radical, rebellious, scary world, especially where we find ourselves, where we have to be so reliant upon ourselves in isolation. I want you to know that you're not alone. And when ladies post about their white experience on skates, including harassment, including trauma, including violence, even to oneself, oops, I fell and I got a bloody nose, crazy. But if that white girl or that passing girl gets more play than you, that is not fair. And I am, I am sorry for that. I don't condone it. I don't appreciate the uh, extra work and enthusiasm to cover it up. Um, to have no repercussions or barred access as somebody who is, yeah, there's a car going by, as somebody who is white and many white girls, uh, women, uh, what what have you, white people, they, they get more play, more coverage, more time, and without repercussion, without BART access. And I want to remind you all that Black children are exposed, and I'm quoting somebody who posted on um, the content that was suppressed uh, on another shop's uh, feed or group or what have you. Um, but they said that black children are exposed to the violence and truth daily with police encounters. And that's true. And that could be police encounters. That could be shopkeep encounters. That could be, let's just pick stuff because it exists that much. It exists that much. And I wouldn't be living the life that I'm supposed to live. Live. I wouldn't be in this position where I get to stand on the, this platform say that it's not right. And what if you can't vote with anything else? You can put your money into companies, into individuals who are willing to give you the time, who are willing to give you the space, and. I'll say it, your money is political, so is your skin. Vote with, vote with that. And to just a note on being a token, using that terminology, using that exercising, like you're one black person that you're gonna run something by, cause maybe it's a little crazy, like these ladies have already said, if you're thinking maybe it's crazy, maybe it's racist, it probably is. Don't run it by your token. Don't use the word token. Stop having tokens that build shame, that breed silence. It's called race baiting. I'm not going to cuss, but I'm telling you I'm done. Don't do it. Okay. And brick and mortar stores that are skate stores in our community, I'll say it here right now, give equal service to people of color. Because I know from personal experience from my own mother, local shops, even here in California, even here in Southern California, even painted beautiful and pink, have been treated poorly, 
as a black person. Silenced, ignored for 45 minutes to two hours at a time in a very small confined space, there to drop money, there to bring it, there to send it. We're here too. Don't discriminate. And you can hire tokens, you can hire people to hide the thing, but stop it. Your behavior, we see it. Knock it off. I'm done. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Abom, for speaking. Um, we'll go ahead and share some things that I think the community can do. And, you know, all my fellow peers here have pretty much said most of the things that I also um, agree with, but just going to touch on some stuff. Um, you know, just in case someone's popping in, they can hear what I have to say. Um, so first off, diversify your communities. Um, obviously don't go to a person of color and ask them, we want you in this space because they're a person of color and we don't have that. No, diversify your community by, you know, giving them an opportunity to join the community, to feel safe, to feel that this is a space that they can exist with their culture, with who they are. They don't, they're not going to be called bad names. They're not going to, you know, be um, not included in certain spaces, because I'm sure there's a bunch of people out there who haven't joined the roller skating community or, you know, haven't joined certain spaces because they don't see someone like them and they don't feel invited. So have that invitation out there. And that could simply be you're having a CIB meetup. Go through your Instagram feed, see who you're following or whatever, and invite those people that you know that live in the area. Put posters up. Like, there are also going to be people who are not on social media that want to join these communities but don't have a way to like especially for people who you know maybe don't have access to the internet in general like we want to be able to give these opportunities to people um everywhere um and not just on social media um and I know that could be hard maybe you don't have a printer to print posters but just think about different ways that you can you know share things in the community and don't don't put posters up and like just your local like library, like go out to other places and put posters up and put posters up in the communities you're uncomfortable in or whatever. Like you need to put those posters up everywhere, not just in your local um, community um, to get the word out. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, I just had an experience once where someone literally told me that they weren't gonna put things up in a certain area because they didn't feel comfortable um, as a white person going into that area. So, um, anyways, um, speak up for us, first of all, because I'm constantly tired of having to talk about the same thing over and over and over, posting a bunch of stuff about, um, what's happening in the world. And I'm frankly getting angry that I don't see on my other Instagram stories that like my fellow or first off, my white peers aren't posting about it, aren't angry about it. Um, i sometimes don't even get responses to the stuff that I'm posting and you just like saying like I see this I am frustrated by it um if there's something that I can do let me know I'm gonna educate myself etc like do more interactions that actually show us that you're paying attention because sometimes I'll post something and I don't get any response or I don't see anyone else sharing it and obviously that's not I'm not trying to force something on you, but I just want you to be aware of it. And if you're not showing me that you're aware of it, then you're showing me that you don't care. And that's frustrating, especially if it's within the roller skating community. It needs to be shared and it needs to be heard. Um, I <laughs> Don't grab our hair. Don't do that. That's annoying. Don't ask to touch our hair. Um, <laughs> I miss you was talking about that. And honestly, I when I was younger, I didn't think much of it. Um, until a lot of people started telling me, like, why do you think they want to grab your hair? Like, they don't have curly hair. Why do you think they want to touch it? I would get comments that would be like, it looks so fluffy. I want to like sleep in it. Like weird things that I was just like, I don't know why you need to respond to me like that. And so don't do that, please. That'd be great. <laughs> don't comment how my hair is more fluffy than yours or how like your hair is perfect after you just took your helmet off and mine looks like a bunny. I don't know. Don't just don't talk about my hair, please. <laughs> um, also be uncomfortable. Like I saw this post going around on Instagram about how, you know, discomfort scares people. Discomfort is what gets you past, you know, certain things gets you 
over and into learning and more educated. If you're uncomfortable talking about race, then you're being ignorant. You're not doing the the learning to be able to talk about race because it's apparent in our society. It's apparent in every community. You need to be talking about it, especially if an issue is happening and you're uncomfortable speaking up for someone. Like if you're going to be the only one speaking up, be uncomfortable. You need to do it because the person of color who's being called out or, you know, being uncomfortable or being um, not included in something there, they could uh, speak up for themselves or they could not because of fear. And so it literally just takes someone else to speak up and, you know, get over their discomfort. And I promise you that it's better on the other side. I promise you that we're going to want to interact with you more. We're going to want to talk to you and we're going to want to do things with you because we know that you're putting in the work to get over your discomfort. And I get a lot of people who come into my DMs talking about certain things being like, I don't, I'm not sure on this issue. Like, can you please give me your side? Or can you please like talk to me a little bit? Not every time do they get it. And I don't think most people are going to get it if you're not black. But, um, you know, like, even if you're not understanding, you can reach out and ask and, you know, because First off, racism is a learned thing and toxicity is learned. Like all of those things, as you educate and grow and learn, you can get past. And it's not, it's not something that is like genetic or it's not something that you can never not do. It's a learned behavior that you can unlearn. And I think that's important for people to realize because, you know, if you think you have an issue that's happening, whether you're like having micro, your micro was the word I'm looking for. You're making microaggressions and you don't realize those are racist or this or that, et cetera. Like you can do the learning and education and you can ask to make sure that you are not doing those things. Um, just be wary, ask first if we have like the, the space and the time to give that to you um, before just straight up, I guess, asking, uh, asking about the issue. Um, especially because some of us get those type of DMs all the time and we could be exhausted. Um, do the learning yourself or try to Google search, uh, before you ask us if you can. Um, so there's that also stop saying you don't want to learn about our history, especially in roller skating. Cause, uh, that's really frustrating. Um, especially when our history is, it involves race and there are people keeping black people are keeping skating alive and have been, and it's so frustrating for people to say like I don't see race I don't I don't care about the color of someone's skin you should care about the color of our skin our culture matters that's what brings the diversity into the roller skating community if you don't care about color then you're being ignored basically <laughs> um I want you to see how I feel and the color of my skin and I want you to see my fellow peers colors of their skin because I want them to feel represented I want them to feel loved I want them to feel love for who they are in the culture that they represent and just like whether you're doing the learning of our history by looking it up or you're talking to people or just you know making sure you're not stepping on toes by saying something that you saw on the internet that's not true like just make sure you're in check on those things because uh history brings us together and especially when you go to events like um I'm trying to think of I haven't been to these events personally, but, you know, like a lot of jam skating has a lot of history in it. And um, there are a lot of popular people in the community that have a lot of history in the community. And, you know, you want to go to those events, not that you have to know everyone, but you should want to go to those events to meet those people who have brought those events alive or, you know, are keeping those things alive. Um, so just to make sure you're learning the history, whether it's in person or online. Um, also TikTok, I want to let you know, if you like and copy link that helps share videos, that helps share videos. So if you see like people of color on your TikTok page, like and copy link, that is, they just had a, a blackout thing. And that was basically what populated a lot of people on my, um, feed. And it was amazing. I don't think, I don't think I've cried that hard in forever just by looking at TikTok videos. It was beautiful. My feed had never been more diverse in my entire time of having TikTok and I had it for a year. So do that. And then on IG, look for skaters, other skaters, because um, you have to do the work on IG. It is frustrating. You're not going to 
see that on your algorithm. You're not going to see it unless other people are sharing. And uh, what I like to do is I like to personally, you know, ask the community like, hey, what are some standards you follow that are people of color or um, that are really cool, et cetera. And you can then share those people with other people. And that's how we get it going by finding other skaters. Um, read audiobooks, Google search. Um, you can, again, ask us, um, but just make sure that we have the space for that. Um, and then I wanted to uh, talk about um, when Avon was talking about adult night. I didn't realize this until you were talking about it, but um, I used to work at a skating rink and our adult night was should have called it black night because it literally had all the like black related songs and i don't ever hear that when i'm at any other day of the rink and it's so frustrating because like it's not just black people that like those songs like why can't you play it in another night why why is it on adult night that and i'm not saying it's bad but why is it on specifically adult night that it's mostly just black people like why can't it be diverse in all of the days i don't understand and that could be primarily because of the music that's being played, but like diversify your music. I don't know why you can't go from like, I don't know, I can't even think of specific songs right now, but like, I don't know if you own a rink or you are wanting to suggest songs, like make sure they're diversifying the music. Like do not let adult night just be the one night for us black skaters to be there. Like, and I'm not saying us black skaters don't like other songs. I'm just saying you, you know what I'm talking about. We all know what I'm talking about, where we go to adult night and we're like, wow, the music is great. But like, why is that? <laughs> so that's pretty much all I have to say, like really do the work. And, um, you know, again, you can ask us, I'm happy helping you, but if you're going to fight me in my DMs, I don't have the energy and the space for that. I'm happy having a conversation. Um, but if you're going to dismiss my own experiences and, you know, personal feelings, then don't come into my DMs, I guess. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much what we all have to say um, that we had um, in a line to say as far as um, certain topics. But now, like all of us have said, um, highlighting, you know, people of color and black skaters, we actually want to tell you about some black skaters that we personally follow and will like to shout out on here. And know that these aren't all the black skaters that are out there. There are so many. So please, if you also know some black skaters that you want to highlight, put them in the chat right now so we can all, you know, find some more black skaters to follow. And um, yeah, if, let's see here. Um, Shelv, if you want to tell us some black skaters that you want to share. Hey, so I didn't want to go and list a whole bunch of independent ones because then I'm like going to forget some. So I want to tell people where they can go and they'll find literally pictures and bios and everything. So the number one would be um, by POC who skate IG because they feature and do takeovers with skaters of colors of all backgrounds, beginners, advanced skaters, shape sizes, like every culture you'll find it. Um, there's also people who skate on Instagram. Instagram. Um, I actually found out today a new Instagram just started called Black Skate Alliance. So I would check them out. Um, if you're in the roller derby and you're feeling like you're alone, Black Roller Derby uh, Network on Facebook group um, by Scarby Doll, you'll just go there and it's just like one huge family. And it's like all the black memes, all the black things like that happened to you in derby or life. Like, it just feels like you're at one giant cookout and it's great. Um, so there are definitely groups and pages that have multiple people. Yeah, Missy's wearing a shirt with <laughs> Scarby Doll's face. Um, so definitely I say go because I don't want, I know certain skaters, but I feel like, again, I'm not going to do the full work <laughs> for you guys. Go to those pages though and you'll find literally scroll and scroll and scroll and you'll just find so many people and once you start on them, you'll like find another skater and another one, but um, definitely use those resources. So again, um, uh, by P POC who skate on IG and then if you're in the you're a person, you're a black person in the roller derby, I would look up Black Roller Derby Network. Um, if you reach out to me or Missy, I'm not sure who else, a bomb if you're in that group, but um, we can invite you to that group and let you in. Um, but definitely there are resources. And then once you find those people you love, follow them, like their stuff, let them pop up and then share them in your story and tag them and just like get it going. Next. 
Yay, thank you, Chef, for that. Um, Missy? Uh, yeah, um, again, Chef with all the words, she's got it all. Uh, but for real though, um, Neon has created such great platform with the BIPOC network and, you know, buy, buy a patch, you know, buy a sticker, buy a t-shirt, buy a sweatshirt, show people that you care. You know what I mean? Like, we don't really have a flag of our own, but like, consider that it, you know what I mean? Like, show, show your alliance, show us that you're there and that you want us to be in your space. That would be nice. Um, but overall, your best bet when it comes to finding other people, um, search online for Facebook for groups, for skate groups that exist locally. Um, you know, like I help run, you know, the CIB chapter for Northern Virginia. So like there's, there's groups out there. You just got to search for it. And there's, there's a lot of opportunities for you to get involved with the local POCs within your community. And that's important and take the time to learn who those people are. And like I said before, if you don't rock with anyone that is, you probably should reconsider that and figure out not just to have another black friend or, oh, I'm cool, I have a black friend now. Like not, not what I'm saying, <laughs> but 100% um, just, if you don't follow those pages, follow them. Um, if you don't know where to go, you know, make sure you're following any one of us that are here now. You know, I'm definitely sure that we're all gonna be reposting some really great people and friends here in the next couple of hours and days. So, you know, stay tuned, but like, there are so many great people out there and I could go on for a list of wonderful skaters out there, but honestly, I want you to do the work and I want you to find them because they're out there and they deserve to be discovered in a natural way, like how we all discovered them, just spending time and searching for them because make that algorithm work is what I'm saying. You know, let's let the companies know too on the other end that we're looking, so stop hiding. You know, like that's what I gotta say. So spend some time, do some digging and find some new friends. <laughs> That's what I got. Thank you so much, Missy. Um, savvy. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have to say that, um, as I mentioned earlier, when I got into the skate community, I had to personally search for skaters of color. Uh, everybody who is presented to me immediately in all the roller skating tags we didn't, we didn't have anything in common except for that we skated. Um, and it's really hard to connect with people when you feel like you have nothing in common. Uh, even if you have something in common, it's always not enough to bring you together. Um, and I think it's important to, when you find a skater of color, ask yourself, what can I do to uplift this person? What can I do to uplift somebody who I know, who I've seen, or I'm hearing now the struggles they highly likely go through in the skate community? What can I do to make somebody's life better? I carry that with me all the time, no matter who I meet, no matter what it's about. I personally want to make people happy I want people to enjoy being around me and I think it's important to um support especially like in in roller skating we have a lot of apparel companies and a lot of creators who create skate apparel and clothing and t-shirt designs and whenever I go to a skate park and I see somebody wearing, um, you know, like a by P by B black indigenous <laughs> people who skate uh, logo. I see that. And I think to myself, like, okay, like I'm not the only person who's aware. I feel safer than if I didn't see this symbol. It's a calling card. And there's a lot of amazing 
iconography and and symbols that a lot of uh, roller skate groups are putting together to call out to each other. You go to your local skate park, you see a Queer Skate Alliance sticker and you're stoked. You're stoked because now you know you're not alone. You're not the only person. And so I think it's really, 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 really important. And I think it'll get us to better places faster if we really put effort into supporting things like that, supporting bringing people together amongst the topics of these issues, along with educating, along with hurting, along with healing, and along with all of it. Thank you so much, Savvy and everyone. Um, Avon? I'm just looking for my unmute button. Um, okay. I'm looking at the chat and I just see so many people participating in this phase of our dialogue, which is shouting out uh, other people of color that they know, that they admire, that they're like shining on. And I just want to name a few people that um, have like really helped me. Um, my cousin, Kevin, he's probably on Instagram, but probably also not. I don't know if he would like it if I like threw his Instagram name out there, but um, my cousin Kevin has been uh, and, and multiple cousins. Oh my goodness. My, my uncle Bob, my grandmother, Shelby, they were uh, competitive uh, skate dancers that also worked with the NAACP and uh, fought for their rights to vote but also fully expressed themselves on their skates, which I thought was beautiful and has always made an impact on me. Um, uh, my, uh, the Black Roller Derby Network is awesome. I'm a part of it, so is my mom. And uh, I wanna shout out Erin Jackson. She is an Olympic speed skater. She's also a roller derby skater. She started as a roller derby skater and transitioned into Olympic speed skating. Her name is Erin Jackson. You can find her at, at @speedj on Instagram. Get ready to just have your mind blown. That transition in my heart was always something that I wanted to, to aspire to. Like I always thought being a speed skater was like one of the coolest things ever. And to see somebody transition from a grassroots sport into an Olympic sport and be a woman and be a person of color there everything about that warms my heart everything about that makes me want to stand up and cheer and and support her in every way Aaron Jackson at speed J speedy J my bad speedy J um, another person who I thought is, thought uh, introduced themselves to me when I moved down here to Southern California and is a character but also full of knowledge and has been really helpful is somebody by the name of James Rich. This gentleman has been really supportive and he listens to me and encourages me and at times provokes me to try new things, to play, uh, to get to know the community that was here before us. And James has been somebody who uh, is part of the Venice uh, dance circle scene. He's been around since he was a young one. Um, uh, his Instagram is Buck Wild J Rich. He, um, you can find him around town, but honestly, the guy is a, a real knowledgeable guy when it comes to jam skating. He's very knowledgeable of the history and uh, just all around really positive uh, person that I skate with and that I respect. Um, also, my friend Esty, she's a music artist. I think she's even in the chats, rumor has it. And um, she has been a really awesome, genuine person that I've been able to share my time with and go skate with. That makes me really happy and makes me feel safe. My friend Dita, 
also a person of color, an indigenous person of color, who would probably roll her eyes at me for even bringing her into this equation and blush and hide. But she's my friend and she's been, we've been skating together for how many years? Oh, 10 plus derby, man. You know what I mean? You get those derby sisters and that's it. Um, I'm blessed. I'm thankful. I, I don't ever want this to end. I don't want this dialogue to end. I want us to continue to grow. I want to save these chats and click on every single person you guys are linking in as empowering, uplifting, community driven skaters. There's like, I'm just scrolling and scrolling and I just keep seeing it. Thank you so much each of you for being here and being present and being a part of this. Thank you. Thanks, Avon, and thanks for everyone for sharing, um, you know, apps, people that the community can follow and uplift. Um, I do want to say this conversation doesn't stop on the live. Like, you can do more. There's, you know, 300 people watching right now, but all of you have so many followers. You can also share all of those people on your stories and, um, you know, share them that way too. Um, some people that I want to personally shout out um, and this isn't everyone, but these are people who I have conversations with that I constantly see on my Instagram who, um, you know, I'm inspired by, and they also talk about things in the community too. Um, and again, this is everyone. So um, I'll share more people on my own Instagram story. But, um, and I think Chev mentioned this person too, but Hazley skates. Um, Hazley is an amazing skater with such a beautiful heart. And it's so creative too. I met them for the first time at roll call and I was talking to them even before then. And she's just an amazing person in general. I am inspired by her, by her creativity, by her passion of roller skating. Like that woman does not stop skating. I swear it's amazing. <laughs> um, and I just love her so much. Um, and these are some people I've also followed through TikTok too. Um, but Gabs on Wheels is a great skater. I love watching them on um, sunny with the skates and I I can also um put these in the chat too in just a second um and I'm oh I don't know if I'm gonna say this right but um Mylan does, does anyone know who I'm talking about Mylan Moxie am I saying it right okay <laughs> um I love I love basically her IG like setup is amazing can we all agree on that like it looks beautiful <laughs> um I love watching her and um, everything that she's about and the things that she speaks up on. Um, NU underscore, again, gonna butcher these, I'm so sorry. Um, a F R O D I S I A C, Afordisiac. Does anyone else know who I'm talking about? I'll put these in the chat too. Um, Spiritology is another person. Um, also, Coily Quads is another person that I see a lot on my Instagram and I love them and they also supported me too and they're such a sweet person um and those are all the instagrams that i've uh written down but there are so many more people and i'm more than happy to put those people on my own instagram as well as give you the chance to um share it on my ig too after the live but um as far as i'm just gonna double check what i have here um just as another thing, just really share those people that are being oppressed in our community. Um, there doesn't need to be a reason to do that. You can literally just have watched the video that they posted and be like, wow, that's amazing. Or wow, that should be shared. Or you could not even think that and you should just share it. Like there are so many things out there, especially tutorials, you know, however people are sharing in the community, just uplift them. And, um, you know, I do that with everyone I try to do that with everyone um but again black skaters are oppressed in the community we're hidden on TikTok like please just do your part in being able to share us um the second thing that we want to go ahead and do is we want to open it up to um answering questions that any of you have as well as um there are well, before I do that, there are actually some Instagrams y'all mentioned that um, I'm going to go ahead and read real quick for you and some documentaries and suggested reading material and podcasts um, just to read this so we don't forget here. So suggested reading and resources mentioned Seeing White, um, which is a podcast. Me and my or me and white 
fragile maybe I shouldn't read these I don't know how to pronounce words me and white fragility by Layla F. Said um white white fragility I really cannot read these if anyone else wants to read these um white I think it's misspelled hold on white fragility I don't know if I'm saying this right um, the new Jim Crow, and these are all reading materials. Anyone can chime in, by the way, open conversation. Um, some documented doctor documentaries, um, United Skates, Roller Dreams, Eight Wheels, and Soul Man Music. Um, I believe this is a brand. Watch um, all of those, you guys. Watch all those documentaries. United <laughs> Skates, super fun, really interesting. Roller Dreams features uh, James Rich that I was just telling you about. Um, Eight Wheels and Soul Man Music. I got to dive into that one. I have not watched that yet. What platform is that one on? Um, it doesn't say here, but um, I'm going to figure, it, figure out. it out before we share it too. Yeah. But if anyone in the comments knows, because um, these were all things people commented too. Um, did you want to say anything else about them, Avon? Um, I just, I, I, I really enjoyed, uh, United Skates and Roller Dreams. Uh, there's so much more about the culture than the movies can even dive into. So just know that when you watch any of these, it's literally just like shaving the top of so so much more and um i hope to uh share more about that um as we traverse the social medias together but uh dive in guys it's gonna be good yes thank you Ooh, is this a documentary how to be an oh. ant oh, this might actually be a book but how to be an anti-racist <laughs> i love it <laughs> <laughs> yes that looks like it. Was uh, yeah I was gonna say I think uh I have that on my page from my sister was reading that book but yeah. also BIPOC was doing like a book club mm -hmm. and had like a bunch of books out to read and that was one of the books and I think I posted the title of the book in there but definitely yeah. give that give that a look yeah BIPOC also they share more than just books too they're actually doing um a lot of stories from people of color in the community too. So if you really want to, you know, follow more skaters and listen to their stories too, please follow that page because it's it's amazing. Um, anyone feel free to chime in because I think. Um, um, I know there's a podcast called Holding Spaces with uh, Magic Wheelism. Uh, she's a derby player, I believe New York, I might be wrong. Um, I know I was on the first episode she had, but she definitely like, I'll just tell you her bio on her page. So it says, holding space with magical willism, podcast amplifies bold, diverse, and undaunted voices across the state world. And it's a lot of uh, marginalized people and she kind of puts a spotlight and they just kind of chat about uh, their life in skating. Awesome. Yay. I added that onto the list. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, um, there's that I did want to say to uh, folks, and I know I said this already, but I definitely want to put this out there. Um, I'm thankful for everyone who's really hung in on the on the this so far, and what I want to intentionally set out for everybody is. I want you to ask yourself to consider what you can do to open doors to more development and self-exploration because that's the key to this whole thing. Whether it's for yourself or you wish this for somebody else, like set this intention and put that out into the universe. I really, really want that for everybody involved on this platform or other roller skaters on other platforms, I want you to ask yourself to consider what it is that you can do to open doors for more development and for more self-exploration. I love that. I love that. And it's not just, you know, it's everyone I feel like on, or at least for me too, like 
you know, roll call in certain other places, I honestly needed to sit down and like, realized that like as other people were talking about their experiences I was like wow I had never seen that as like hurtful or harmful and that's again from growing up in like such a white community and like nobody telling me that that was hurtful and harmful and um I don't know I just wanted to touch on that because I think that we can you know always tune in and you know dig deeper into ourselves and really think about what is harmful to us what is affecting us, what's hurting us. Cause sometimes we don't even know that the community is being harmful because it's the first time we're in a community and it's the first time we're ever dealing with something like this. And um, I appreciate you talking about that Avon cause I honestly really relate to that. And it's hard, but roll call definitely opened a lot more trauma up for me and those gates of like having been blacked out just started flooding in. And I was like, wow, I didn't realize that was suppressed back there. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the other part I wanted to mention, if anyone wants to chime in, please, again, you can interrupt me. Um, we had a list of some more skaters to mention, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and read all those real quick. Um, we had Bianca dot, or Bianca period skates, S-K-8-S, uh, Tanya underscore Dean underscore skates, skater rubrics, uh, uni court, and court is spelled with a K. Just Seconds, Speedy J, and there's so many more, and I love, I'm hoping that we can put this somewhere. <laughs> um, Buck Wild, J Rich, uh, and then all of us, uh, we got Miss Myrtles, Hazley Skates, Holding Space with Magical Wheelism is a great um, one that you should also follow. Uh, Mocha Hauntus, I love that username, that's cute. <laughs> um, and then all of us, so we've got Abominatrix, which is Abom. We've got me, Kiana Iwana. We have Savvy, Savvy Crafts, spelled with uh, two V's and one K. Um, fat underscore girl underscore has underscore Moxie is Shev. <laughs> um, we've got Missy Savage 68, and Missy is spelled M I S S Y. Um, we've got some more here dance, period, skate. Lily skates a lot, and I'm sure there's going to be more. So hopefully we can again put this somewhere. Um, but yeah, from here, we just want to go ahead and open it up to the comments. Um, everyone on the podcast, if you take a look at the document, there are a couple of things that uh, Dita wrote down for us, if you want to bring any of that up, as well as um, if anyone in the comments wants I do to have something to say. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like I forgot to address, and I should shame on me as an artist. Um, a lot of artists are in this, are also skaters. And I rarely see people that look like anyone on the screen and their artwork. And right. that is another form of representation. So like, I want to buy merch that has a person of color on it or has a larger person on it. We don't see that. Everything's like the same body shape, the same color, the same skin tone. Like, why is there no diversity in your skate art? It's, you'd, I'll see more aliens drawn than like black people or Asian people or Latinx people. So also include that, like put us on your merch. We will, we have money, we have money and we want to throw it at something that we want to support, but it's just not there for us. And it shouldn't be when people ask me about black artists, I shouldn't have to say the same one person I know or the same two people. I don't think I know more than two or three artists that draw black people in roller skates. So that's another form that I think I forgot to bring up that like, if you're an artist, please be inspired to like pull another shade of that paint or marker or whatever you're using. And believe me, we're there, we're gonna support you. That community also wants to be represented. Thanks. Yeah, yeah can we just highlight two people real quick? Like I, I wanna just highlight um, one person is completely related to her uh, previous conversation and that's mixed hues. Sam is amazing. And Sam was at Roll Call and I met Sam at RollerCon, sweating our palms off, trying to do rails for the first time when I met Nick the Medic for the first time. And if you know me, you know, I get really weird around Nick the Medic because he's like up there on like my idol list because of his 50-50 grinds. But anyway, it's not the point. But in that class, I met Sam and she was the only other colored person in that class that I can, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. If not, then she's definitely the only one that came to me and talked to me. And 
supporting her artwork and being at RollerCon and she's the only booth, I'm pretty sure, that was run by a person of color. Like that was her business. And we had a conversation. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. That is her artwork right there. And she has her booth every year and she helped create, you know, I'm pretty sure this design that I'm wearing. I'm not yeah. Mistaken. Yeah. So, you know, with Scarby on it. And it's it's a it's an honor to play with her. It's an honor to buy her artwork, sport it on my car, on my helmet, everywhere I go. And, you know, it's support, support, support. <laughs> you everyone that you possibly can within the community and just another person to shout out um definitely my sister has been such a heavy supporter for me in my journey and making me feel included and never letting me doubt myself or feel not included she keeps me on my toes and i just want to shout out to her real quick and say thank you and also to my other closest friends fruit roller i think it's fruit fruit dot roller I wrote it down to double check. Um, she's a new friend and I recently connected with her over the past year or so going on, you know, a little bit more than that. And she worked in, you know, social services and she just connects with people and understands in a different way and, you know, makes you feel heard. And she was the beginner and she just rocks at being a beginner and, accomplishing every me mental milestone that you come across, you know, thinking that you can't jump, you know what I mean? And just, just little things. And you got to appreciate the people that help build you up along the way. Totally. I'm so glad you talked about Sam because I, as soon as you said her name and her idea, I was like, that's who I was going to talk about. <laughs> and yes. also, Shove might not say this, but Shove also makes merch and stickers and um things that represent um the people of color out there and represent you know what she stands for so if you want to you know help out a person of color a black skater like buy her stuff it's amazing <laughs> and it's not just that it's also um body positivity which is another thing that um we should uplift in the community um but i so on the doc some questions are coming up um, i got I got a question that's flying through right now that is for the whole panel. Mm -hmm. um, it's from Alyssa F. I have a question for the panel as a whole. Would you say that you manage or mitigate your mental health in a positive way when there is so much negative circulating around our media daily? Did I execute that question properly? Yeah. How, sorry, how would you say you manage or m mitigate your mental health in a positive way when there's so much negativity circulating our media daily. Oh, yeah. putting it um, should we just go again in the order? Or does anyone want to speak? Okay, yeah, let's go in order. All right. So, because I can't remember anything, uh, <laughs> shove right. <laughs> All right. Um, for me, I think it's sometimes you just have to turn everything off. <laughs> and step away um i'm really into like candles and stuff and meditating and intentions and stuff like that so i kind of just will sit at my altar and light a candle and put some incense and just like just breathe just slow down and like calm and like just relaxing and that kind of puts me back because i actually needed that today because i haven't had that chance since everything like since yesterday and I feel very on edge because of that, but even this is helping. So I think relying on my community and talking it out is a form of therapy that's free, which is great. <laughs> um, so that's definitely um, a way that I kind of deal. I think it's like taking that pain and suffering and um, turning it into something good like this talk um, to help other people. That makes me feel better because I'm, I'm definitely a helper and I like to uplift people. And also giving to myself and taking that moment to just like shut everything off and check in with myself mentally. Awesome, Missy? Yeah. Um, so what I have to say 
pretty much is along the lines of like, I don't know, like sometimes you just need to step away from it all. Just like how Shev said, um, not necessarily finding a safe space, but you need the, you, you gotta have a personal place that you know puts you in a comfort zone like any other. And for me, that's that's my skates. Like, I really don't have anything else. Like, my skates are the gateway to happiness. Like, I have a bad day, I put my skates on. Or I wallow in my sadness. Like, I know that sounds really depressing, but, like, that's pretty much it. And even if that means just, like, literally putting on my skates, not even, like, it could be raining outside and this happened. You know what I mean? put your skates on if they make you happy like chase endorphins that's what I do I I'm consistently chasing endorphins and then when I have the strength I open up like a flower and I show myself for a little bit and then I close back up you know I almost feel like a midnight flower like I only have a certain time where I like to shine and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's years, sometimes it's not. And that's okay. If you're still figuring it out, that's okay. You don't need to have a plan. You know, I, I grew up pagan, you know, so I very much relate to an altar lifestyle and, you know, just meditating and using crystals and other methods to, you know, get what I need out of my life and my dailies. But when I need an escape from the world and all of the BS that enthralls it, it's turning to a friend and venting because I thoroughly believe in letting it off your chest. Don't hold that inside. Don't let it stew. Don't sit there and just get more angry or more sad because you're alone and have no one to skate with. I've been there. I feel you. You know, and that's okay to still not have any friends. Like, it's a new world and accept that and have a virtual friend, create challenges with each other. You know, some of my best friends are on the other side of the country. You know, most people know um, I'm an East Coaster, but I'm also born and raised in California, Southern California. Like, so my heart is there. You know, my family is there and my friends are there. And it's, it's, it's hard because when you grow up in two different places that are two different places, you don't know how to act. Because literally I could wear one thing and be perfectly fine back home and wear that same thing here and be called a hooker or something. You know what I mean? Like something drastic. And you're like, what? It's literally just a crop top with strawberries on it. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't even need to be big. It's just the culture is so different in two different places. And it's hard to find an escape sometimes. Sometimes it's just not there. And you have to rely on your friends for that escape. And I, I did that just recently. <laughs> you know, if, if you know, you know. But like... Sometimes you reach a wall and you don't know where to go. You're scared, you're upset, you know, and all you have is to reach out. That's okay. It's okay to share your feelings. And a wise woman told me earlier today, and you know who you are, that you're allowed to feel everything. You should process every feeling. Don't let that hold you down. Don't let negative energy hold you back from going outside and putting your skates on. Don't let the lack of community prevent you from going outside and having a good time. Don't let that creepy officer make you feel uncomfortable because you're just skating outside and having a good time. And if people wanna be rude and nasty, You know what to do. 
Like I could say a million in uh, one words, but you know what to do. And if you're an ally in that situation, you better not be silent because that's what hurts us the most is when it happens and you're there and you don't do anything or I didn't see it. I didn't, I, well, I just don't get how you're reacting that way. If you feel that coming up in your throat to say it, swallow it and then think about it is all I have to say. But other than that, I think I rambled, but. We love your rambling, Missy. <laughs> Um, it's Savvy. Hi. So um, I've, I've honestly recently experienced uh, multiple times where I've had to step away from social media. I've had to step away from the community um, and take a moment to, to breathe. Breathe and be in the reality of what's in front of me at the moment when I can't handle what's happening to people like me when I go on social media and all I see are black people being killed and people like me being hurt. Um, and even from those who want to do good, they're trying to spread the message, they're trying to spread the information of what's going on. But also at the same time, without them intending to, we're also we're affected by it. Um, and I think when it comes to things like that, it's so important to know when it's okay to step away. Are you educated on what's being talked about? Yes, okay. Uh, is there anything you can do in this moment that you have the mental capacity to do as a black person to help what's going on? Um, you know, you don't, then go take a nap, take a bubble bath, take some time to yourself, go skate. You don't, owe that to anyone. You don't owe your energy. That's what our allies are for. That's what our allies are supposed to be helping us do is help carry the weight that's on our backs, you know? So I don't want any, any black skater to ever feel guilty when they are hurting, they're, they're hurting hard and it's, I, don't, I don't think it's fair for, for people, especially people who are not affected in the same way as said black skater to come at them in a time where they're hurting or they're vulnerable and demand things from them after they've already been affected by what's going on. I just think people don't realize um, the sensitivity of it sometimes. Um, and I think it's really punk to say forget it when you've had enough of these things hurting you because they hurt you and they systematically affect you you should never feel guilty for stepping away and taking some time for yourself ever 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 and i think um i think there's a lot of pressure <sighs> to speak your mind on things immediately as soon as they happen. And not, not everybody can speak on things that quickly. A lot, some people process things at different rates. Um, and I just don't want anybody to feel bad for, you know, taking, taking some time um, away from social media when they need to. You know, it's, it's, it's a very different action than saying, I see what's going on, but I don't care enough to react or do anything about it. That's a completely different story when it's something that, especially something that doesn't affect you. But when it's something that it hurts you to even hear about it, you've been hearing about it all day. You've been hearing about it all morning. You've been hearing about it your entire life because you live that experience. You live, you live that life. Um, you know, it's okay to create space for yourself to make yourself happy if you need to. I just, I just want to put that out there and make sure that people know that. Thank you so much, Savvy. A bomb. All right, navigating and mitigating negative media. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, Hmm. 
I'm a Northern California girl. Um, so being in uh, uh, Southern California and the pressure to perform, to be on camera, to be on, to look beautiful, to fit in, uh, has never really necessarily been my strong suit. While I want to achieve and be successful at these superficial things, um, it's really hard to be in that all the time and always be on and always be giving your best face forward when you're feeling very human and having moments of just complete overwhelm overwhelming feelings and you're going through your own stuff at the same time uh it's not easy i tend to me personally i tend to pull away i tend to become very uh reclusive i don't i've been living down in southern california for about two years and i came down here with the express purpose and vision of being a skater, being a professional skater, being a skater that represents um, not only an industry, but a community of being a representation of my cultural heritage, as well as being a liaison to other people to come in and be a part of this too. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a leader. I want all of these things, but you can't be that 24 seven. And then when you're bombarded with resistance, when you're bombarded with entities and individuals that pull and suck creativity away from you, or even what you value as essence and creative um, nurturing and have that sucked away and run off with, it's, it's, it's tough. It's isolating. It feels lonely. It feels like there's no one out there that has your back. And um, coming out and being involved with uh, a skate shop that I believe in and then to be dropped and abandoned and the only person really let go, that, that hurts. And that rejection of like a group and a social mentality, it's painful to no longer be involved and realize that you're not really wanted or desired or appreciated. Um, but then... I digress. Um, I seclude myself and hide myself and, and feel like sharing is not safe and feel like friendship is not safe. And I miss home and I miss people who appreciate and value me. I miss uh, that intrinsic piece of community and family. Uh, so it's, becomes an extra hard day when you stumble across stuff like this where people are being treated badly and muted and shoved off to the side that's it's a tough place to be and um to be honest i feel the most safe the most empowered when i'm skating which is why i started doing it in the first place um, I want to feel safe in that space. I want to feel safe on my skates. I want to go out there and like let everything go and put music in my ears and like feel the wind and just feel that sense of like gliding and flight and freedom and creativity and like movement and expression. Like I need to transmute that energy into something different, into something meaningful, into into anything the possibilities are endless and it's it's a really tough day when you go outside and you realize that like your friends and your neighbors are being oppressed they're being silenced it's it's a tough tough thing to deal with and sometimes you can't put on your skates and skate away from it sometimes you have to face it and Sometimes you have to face the negativity and look at it in the face and go, this is friggin' ugly and I don't like it and I want to change it. I want to do something about it. And you have to start asking questions and 
uh, sometimes it's just not about avoiding it. And uh, I want to meditate. I want to talk to my friends. Uh, but sometimes it's just not enough. And that's where we're at today. Those things are all important, must happen. You do need to take time for yourself. You do need to find a peaceful space, a sanctuary, a trusted ear, a friend, a heart, a place to be. You need those things. You need those things. You need to meditate. You need to breathe. You need those things. You need to go skate. You need it. You have to create. You have to. But sometimes you have to make noise. You have to vote with your feet. You have to vote with your wallet. And you have to pay attention and not harbor silence. And that's just where we are today. That's what I have to do to deal with the negativity that's out there right now. That's what I have to do. That's where I'm at. It's a scary place to be. It's vulnerable to be right here. All of us, before we even got on here, were like, we're scared. <laughs> I'm nervous. But we're right here doing it together. And you guys are here listening to us. And those of you who tap into this later, listening to it, I appreciate you for just doing that much. Maybe that's what you can do for yourself today is just to sit here and listen. And thank you. Um, that's what I have for now. Thank you, Abom, and thank you everyone so much for sharing and answering that question. Um, again, if anyone else has questions, definitely leave them in the comments, please. Um, as far as my answer to that question, I am a person who cannot keep my emotions inside. And I'm pretty sure like most of everyone who is on this podcast knows that because I will definitely talk about things immediately when they happen. And um, like even not even being in certain groups, like it still pops up and I'm wondering why these things are happening. And obviously I want to know because I want to stay informed, but you know, like stuff that I'm not even involved in that my fellow black skaters are being mistreated for, like that hurts, whether you're not involved in it, like it hurts to know that you're being mistreated for the color of your skin. And I'm constantly hurting there with everyone. And it's so frustrating because I'm such an empath that like someone else is hurting, whether I don't know them or not, I'm going to be hurting too. And again, to go to bed, knowing all of these things to have this on my brain to like, try to go to bed at night. Like it's so hard to do that when you have all of that on your mind. And it's so hard to do that when you have no idea what you can do. The person being oppressed, what you can do to make a, your community better, to make the world better. And that's why we need allies is because there are people out there that we do not have power over. We can personally not like, we don't have the power to make people stop mistreating us and we need you. Like, and it's frustrating because again, how I'm frustrated when I don't see my um, allies angry, like you need to take a better stand and <sighs> I don't know, I'm going off topic, but <laughs> um, I, I honestly don't have any ritual of dealing with my mental health. I think it's more just talking to my friends and, you know, feeling the way that they're feeling and expressing that and making sure I'm not the only one who's feeling all of this. Um, I probably should meditate like a bomb does. <laughs> um, I sometimes draw, I sometimes um, listen to a podcast that takes my mind away from the things that I'm feeling but honestly the way that I just push through is by talking and by by honestly crying I like I don't think this whole week has been awful like and what is it it's Wednesday last week this week everything that's going on right now it has been awful I probably cried every single night I I don't know like it's just so hurtful and I there's it feels like there's nothing that I can do and so like managing my mental health is pretty much just talking to people and crying and I don't know I could seem like a strong person but you're also not not strong for crying so um I'm probably I probably don't have anything to uh I don't know I'll just say that 
Um, as far as the other questions that we have on here, would anyone, does anyone see one on the document? Did anyone see another one in the comments that they want to talk about? I definitely wanted to talk about, um, a I'm not going to butcher that word, but um, thinking that we have to change who we are to fit in. Um, I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier, just about how the area in which you're brought up in has so much to, has so much impact on how you see yourself and how you think you should be to fit in with the current society that you're dealing with as a teenager or at any age really I guess but um I think we should definitely talk about just why is it that we have to try to fit ourselves into a mold like why is it that every color girl has a horror story about relaxer like why is it that every girl you know has that story about how every girl in their school wore Ugg boots and sweatpants and a messy bun and got away with it. But, you know, we had our hair messy one day. We were, you know, sent to the counselor's office to, you know, go home and change your hair because it looked too nappy that day because you didn't do it. Like, that's all a part of this big cloud that we live in as children that we're forced to conform to so that we can have a normal childhood. Like, that is so messed up. Like, there's words I want to say other than messed up, but, like, it's just so messed up. <laughs> like, it really is. And no child should have to go through that. And if you're a parent that skates right now, like, and you have children that you're trying to teach to skate because they're on that age, like, you're dealing with that. You know, you're dealing that with yourself and with, you know, your own children. Like, that's got to be hard. Like, I just, I want to, I think that's a really important question that we should just go over. And how you can help, if you have, you know, if you're an ally and you have children in school, like, promote, don't touch the hair. You know what I mean? Like, explain what that is. Explain that people have spiritual connections to their hair. Like, you don't just go like touching everybody's Bible. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you gotta have some respect somewhere along the line. Like, why is that so hard to give? Why is that so hard to see as something that needs to be done? Teach your children, teach yourself. You know, we have to allow the community that is beneath us to understand why it is the way that we do certain things. And I feel like we forget that sometimes and being influencers, you are influencing children like half of the time in some degree, you know, we're all still growing throughout life, but like you really want to be able to make them feel like they can be whoever they want, you know? And that's why I think that's important for, to embrace yourself. Embrace your curls, embrace the natural things that is about you, you know, whether that's your body hair or whatever, you know, you should allow that, that 100 self to shine through at all times. And no one should make you feel down about that. And I feel like it's really hard to do that as a kid because no one tells you that you can. No one says it's okay to not straighten your hair. It's okay to wear whatever you want to wear. And if your school has really terrible policies on dress codes, then you should address it. Or if they always make the colored girls, you know, wear their hair nice. I can't tell you how many times I was sent home because I didn't, I wasn't appropriate for school because I had nappy hair that day. Like, I'm a child trying to learn and you're concerned about how my hair looks right now? It doesn't look like I bathed? then that's the least of your concern. Like that, that should be your concern is that I'm being taken care of at home. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're, uh, that's, it, it always hurt so much when you didn't get the same response as somebody else. You know, I'm wearing the same length of shorts 
that that white girl has on, but I have more of a backside and now all of a sudden it's not appropriate. How many shorts holler like, have you not been able to wear because that brand just doesn't make shorts for bodies that are not flat. And why do they charge them double for the same amount of fabric? You know what I mean? Or like, and then you have certain ones that are curved in certain directions so it can accentuate. Like it's, there's, there's so much to it. There's so many layers on how society creates this facade that you're supposed to fit into. And another bomb I want to throw, but like F that facade, you know what I mean? Like just forget that, be yourself, be 100% yourself, spread your own trends, make your own t-shirts, support your local companies. You know what I mean? Like just don't, don't give up on yourself. It's never worth it. Cause at the end of the day, they just want to be you. They want that special shine because you are yourself and you are true to yourself and you let your curls down. Never let someone short who you are. And I think that's just where, where I round off with that. Awesome, thanks Misty. Um, does anyone else wanna speak up about that certain question? We can just go with Shev again. Oh, did anyone else want to talk about it? That question, it was um, feeling like we have to uh, dress different by uh, to fit in, correct, Missy? Oh, yeah, man. the question was um, assimilatism or something, thinking we have to change who we are to fit in. Oh my gosh, okay. I've totally fallen into this. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. I've fallen into this. Um, <laughs> okay. Be yourself that my, I'm giving advice for this. Be yourself, be whoever it is that you intrinsically are. Um, do not try to conform to what other people's standards of beauty are. Uh, it's a hollow endeavor. <laughs> I definitely have tried many times in my life to fit in and be accepted and dress the part of whatever that role may be. And I've definitely put on the booty shorts and tried to fit into like this idea of what a roller skater is, which is essentially blonde hair, tube socks, and um, tank tops and booty shorts. Did I say booty shorts already? I don't fit into that. Um, I don't fit into that. Uh, and when I look at pictures of myself trying to do that, I, I see myself for what I'm trying to do, which is trying to just fucking, dang it, I'm so sorry, trying to fit in. Um, and it's, it, it doesn't work. I apologize for that, that F-bomb. I'm really sorry. Um, I, I don't... I don't fit in to my own spirit, to my own being when I try to fit the standard of what I am supposed to be as a woman to what society's standards are, is what I'm trying to say. And um, so whoever you are, <clears throat> whatever you manifest yourself in being Kiana, you're really good at this. Shove, I respect and idolize you for it. Like you both do things where you're just like, this is who I am. This is my spirit is radiating through me, not only in me just walking down the street or breathing, but in what I wrap and envelop myself in to be in this atmosphere and to be in this world. This is how I present myself and I am my true self and whatever I manifest and wake into being. I love that. I love that. It inspires me so much. And sometimes I really embrace it. And then I go, hmm, this is me. I should just be me. <laughs> you know, and sometimes that's no makeup and sweaty and wearing a hat and my hair is tangled and oops. I mean, 
Uh, I'm sure Estro can attest to this of how many times I've shown up someplace with like just crazy hair and like wearing weird clothes and be like, I'm doing it. I'm here, everybody. Whee! <laughs> So um, I think lean into that more, all y'all who are out there, be yourself, be you, yourself, whatever that is. Uh, I wish I looked like Gwen Stefani and that's not happening. So I should let that go. That's what I would say. Awesome. I think, Savvy, were you going to speak or trying to speak? Let's hear. <laughs> Um, when it comes to uh, assimilation, if you take that energy that you are putting towards to fit into something that you are not, and you take that energy and put it into truly being yourself and finding the best way to be you possible, I promise you, you will be so much happier. Promise. Assimilation never got anybody anywhere. Never going to. Be yourself unapologetically shove <laughs> well as someone that like never literally fits in anywhere um <laughs> like you just gotta be yourself like there's so many even if I think I wanted to try to fit in with a certain look they don't make that for me anyway so <laughs> might as well build my own thing so I think definitely like grew up thinking I had to straighten my hair to keep it as straight as possible. And then I'd wear clip-ins and I remember like being like Latin X passing because all my friends were, and I would just like not really never correct them. I never said I was and lied about my culture, but I'd always try to fit in with them because I grew up in Compton and it was either you were black or you were Latin X and there was no in between. Um, and being like the punk rocker I was, like everyone thought I was a weird black kid listening. Um, I definitely was one of those people that not until graduating high school when my dad showed up, people were like, You're black? And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and so it definitely was a journey to embrace like not being ashamed of who I was, um, and having that internalized hatred. And with that being said, it was like learning to also like I don't need to straighten my hair. Um if I want to have straight hair one day, I'll throw a wig on. If I want to look like a goth one day, because that's the music playlist I was listening to that day, Too Much Susie and the Banshees, I'm going to dress like a goth. I don't think about what other people think because most people are like, if you're a stranger, why would I value your opinion? I'm just going to live my own truth. Um, so it's definitely like, you don't really start growing and having good things come to you until you, like Savvy said, you need to embrace yourself. Like you're, if you're living your own truth, you'll notice good things come to you because people are drawn to people that are living in their own truth versus a lie. Because I respect anyone there. I've met people that necessarily aren't my cup of tea, but I'll still hang out with them because they're living their truth. And I'm like, they're not lying about what they are. Um, they're like, that's just who they are. And that's the path that they walk. So I respect that before I respect someone that's definitely like wearing a suit and being a facade of who they truly are. I always like respect someone like me, you're the weirdest weird you are. Like, have you met my girlfriend? Um, <laughs> so like, just like, that's more attractive as a person than someone that's trying to fit in this pretty little box and be like, I'm perfect. I'm just like you. It's like, I don't want that. Bring me your weird, bring me your everything. And I'll learn to love, I'll love you so much more for that. So I definitely, you need to be true to yourself. Yes. Had to find that unmute button there. Um, <laughs> I love everything everyone said so far and pretty much just be you. And I think that the only thing I would add to that really is um, as far as my personal experience, a lot of trying to fit in really, I think maybe like the last couple of years finding myself in roller skating was where I really started being myself. Cause I can even remember down to an elementary school where I was trying to buy all the popular figurines or like buy the cool sweater or like buy all these things so that I could fit in with people because I no one wanted to hang out with me. I was being bullied, all of these things. And that could just be because I have interesting, uh, and I was going to say interesting interest, a uh, weird interest. I don't know, just, you know, not the norm things. And I think I'm attracted to that mostly because um, I don't like 
following other people in their path and um, or in the path that's happening. And that could just be because maybe I feel, um, I'm going to say maybe I feel more uh, leader-ish and like bringing other things out into the community or whatever. Obviously, you can tell by the makeup that I wear all the time. I love clowns and um, I'm glad that fellow other Moxie people like that too. But um, I think, you know, just not having people in your life who are able to tell you like, it's okay to be you. Like, it's okay to wear your hair curly. Like, it's okay to not, you know, my mom would put it in a bun all the time or like would put it in braids because that was an acceptable way that society deemed me being clean or me being like looking like the norm. And honestly, until like I came to San Diego, that was where I started doing my own hair. That was when I would let my hair be natural and curly because that was what I liked. And I didn't want to straighten my hair. I didn't want to do all these things that, you know, society was telling me was better. And it stinks because I straightened my hair like three times in my life. And my hair like in the back is straight now because I've straightened it. Like I, it damaged my hair. And I think that just reminds me day to day, honestly, to just be who I am. Because if you're going to do the norm. If you're going to try to fit in, you're going to be damaged. You're going to be hurt. You're going to, you know, have a part of you that's not able to come out because that's not the true you. And I'm not saying don't straighten your hair, do it. If it doesn't damage your hair, do it. If it damages your hair, I guess that's your choice. (laughs) But what I'm just trying to say is like all those years of neglect and hurt, like, you know, where people weren't accepting me, like it took me until, how old am I? I'm almost 23. And it took me until when I was like 20 to realize that I'm going to attract the people that will love me for who I am by just being me. If I'm going to be fake and try to fit in for a bunch of people to love me, I'm not going to be happy. So I think just being true to who you are, as long as it's obviously not harmful, (laughs) is good. And um, that's pretty much all I have to say um, on that topic. Um, And let's see here. We have some more questions, um, but I don't want to leave this part. I would like whoever um, here would like to speak up on something specifically to just start. Um, We don't have to go in order. You can leave your mics on, I guess, if it's um, not too loud and um, we can just talk. Um, If there's nothing to talk about, then, you know, we can end it. Well, if we're wrapping soon, again, the intention of self-growth and development and opening doors is definitely what I want to manifest, what I want out there in the world. So thank you guys for, for being here and being present with us as we're sharing space today. While there's so much happening in the world, there's a lot of protests actually happening today around the United States for people of color. And we just happen to energetically be rounding ourselves up here uh, as a team, as uh, coworkers and friends. That is a powerful place to be. I'm, I'm thankful to be here. Definitely, uh, we'll bounce off of that. Um, very thankful to be here. I'm really glad that I was able to put my input out there and, you know, some of my personal opinions and thoughts for, you know, people to freely judge and either take or dismiss and, you know, do what you will with what you've heard today. But thank you for listening, because if anything, that's the first step. If you don't do anything, at least you took the time to hear at least some people out. You know, we, we are not by any means everybody. And there are more voices that you still need to hear. Um, and just voicing what we've all voiced throughout this call. And that was, you know, take some time to educate yourself. Take some time to truly become an ally. Don't sit in the silence. Don't let that family member talk down about that culture or race. And, you know, be aware of yourself, be self-conscious of the cultural appropriation that you may do. 
on any daily basis. Watch your words. You know, there are indigenous words out there that people want to throw around like powwow and tribe and everything else. And those words mean things and we need to be respectful of those meanings. So be cautious. And if you don't understand what I mean or where I'm coming from right now, don't buy a spirit animal t-shirt. You know what I mean? Unless it's the band. Like, <laughs> just straight up. Just like, you, you just shouldn't do it. It's not, it's not a good thing to be spreading. You know, don't say, hey, let's powwow together. Let's, let's have a gathering. Let's talk. Let's have a meeting. There's so many other words you can use. And I think just reminding everyone just that self-consciousness is within yourself. Just like how it is to correct yourself when you mess up someone's pronouns. You know, I live in corrections every day. We all do. We're all gonna make mistakes. We're not gonna get it right the first time. But own up to it, correct yourself, learn from it, try not to do it again. And be there for the other people in your community that are trying to do the same thing. Be there for each other to lean on when, you know, you get pulled over in the middle of the night and your heart's racing and you don't know what to do, but there's only, you know, a certain group of people that's really going to help you through that moment. And just know that's okay to reach out to that person because there are just some things that we experience that only another one like us can help us get through. And there's nothing wrong with that. And allies don't take that as something bad but just know that when we do go to you that you're a special person to us and that you you really help us get through certain things and that's all I really got to say um I'd like to say that we definitely can't rewrite history but we can make sure we don't repeat it um definitely agree with the sentiment when they say that one of the most disrespected things in the world is a black woman or I'll just say femme for this instance and one of the most dangerous things to be is a black man and in the world we live in and with everything that keeps happening even if we don't know the person that it's happened to personally we feel that pain so be kind to the people of color you know because this is something we live with all the time it's a fear we always have so I hope that we keep this discussion going. I hope that this was freeing emotionally and informative for people. Um, I hope that you guys have a taste of what roll call is and then decide that how can I participate or host a roll call of my own because it can be a very healing experience. Um, but I hope we gave you some of the tools that you need to keep this going so that our world can, can become a little better, not just in the roller skating world, but in life in general. And I also want to thank you, Estro, for letting us use this platform for this, because we often, we try to scream the loudest, whether it's the worst, I can't breathe, and no one hears. So thank you for giving us an opportunity to actually speak up. Thank you. Savvy, did you want to say anything before we go? <laughs> yes, I just want to know if you wanted to go first or not. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm really thankful. I'm really thankful for this platform, for everybody who came to listen to us today, um, for everybody who cares, for everybody who's angry, um, for everybody who wants to see a difference. I'm extremely thankful for that. And I mean, very, very thankful for you. And I'm, I'm thankful for your time and your energy and your efforts um, to help, to do what you can to help people. And I think, oh, I want, I want to thank Estro for lending us this platform and, and, you know, hearing, hearing what was going on and reaching out, making sure that we were okay, doing what an ally should do. Um, you know, I'm really thankful for that. <laughs> really, 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 really thankful for that. And I'm so thankful for the 
relationships I'm able to build through shared trauma as horrible as it sounds, you know? Um, yeah. So just thank you guys so much. So, 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 so much. I love everything everyone said, and I love all of you. Obviously, I'm pretty sure you all know that. Um, everyone that is on this podcast right now, I appreciate so much. You inspire me so much. Um, again, Astro, thank you for this platform. Thank you for uplifting us, giving us an opportunity, especially in you know times when they're tough right now. And thank you for listening to us and believing in us. And um, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, be where I'm at without someone believing in me like you do and I am just so thankful for that and I if you were to ask me like two years ago if I would be in this position right now being able to help the community and like being able to inspire and like you know get to talk about the things going on in the community like at the beginning of this podcast I felt I felt like there was weight on my shoulders I I want to still cry, but like, I'm feeling hopeful after this podcast, listening to everyone, like, like reading the chat, seeing that people relate, seeing that people, you know, empathize with us and are willing to do better. Like seeing y'all at black skaters when we ask, like, I love that. I love it. And I'm just, I'm feeling so hopeful. And I hope this does not leave this live because it, this should not just exist here. This should exist outside of uh, the live, it should exist in the community. Our efforts should be existing everywhere. And it shouldn't just be in the roller skating community. Wherever you go, you need to make sure you're speaking up. You need to make sure that you're uplifting everyone, being diverse, making sure all people are included. And um, I just, I'm so thankful for the opportunities that I have. And I, I, I don't know. When I'm going to bed thinking about bad stuff, I'm also thinking about the fact that I'm so thankful to just be alive and to be here and to just have all the opportunities I have too. And um, with that, we want to leave you feeling hopeful. We want to leave you feeling, um, you know, like you're able to uplift other people. You're able to feel uplifted. Um, and we're, I'm hoping that we're gonna, at least I am, um, but I'm hoping that we're going to shout out all those um, black skaters. We're going to share with you the list of documentaries, podcasts, um, movies that you can watch to educate yourself in the books and everything. And um, I just want to leave you with saying that if you do the work, I'm going to see it and I'm going to be thankful. And if you're not going to do the work, then I will also see that. And, you know, if you want your black community to also support you and to feel included, then do the work because it, there's so much material out there that you can utilize and um, it's more powerful to uh, be standing up for us than to be on the other side. So um, unless anyone else wants to say anything, unless there's more comments or questions, I think um, that's where we'll leave off. I really want to just thank each and every single one of you for sharing your light with the community. You, I believe in each one of you so, so much. You are such hardworking, intelligent, beautiful skate souls that I'm so, I'm so proud to skate with and be able to work beside. Um, I also want to thank Neon and Kathleen Skatewitch from the BIP Skate for allowing me to uh, go to the first roll call in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I kind of went on a as a on a whim. Um, I was asked a couple times from a couple of people here, you know, encouraged to to attend. And when you touch the hearts, when you touch your heart and open your ears and listen to um, these stories, you may walk away from your computers and really feel physically um, changed and altered. And I've learned that um, I've learned through my experience as an ally that it it I really had to look at um, my biases and how my eyes really view the world um, through eyes of comparison and um, how that's really destructive. And it takes great work and it takes action. 
And I think one of the action items that we're asking everyone is to post for the next seven days a POC skater that they're inspired by. And I really want to encourage everybody to do that um, as a token of appreciation uh, for this podcast, um, because we do um, uh, we do really want to continue these conversations, maybe even as early as tomorrow and 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 later on this week, because they're really important conversations to have. Um, to do the the anti-racism work that we really need to be doing as a brand and as a community. And I just honor and respect each and every one of you so, so much. Thank you very, very much for, for doing this. Thank you, Estra. Yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you, guys. I'm honored to be here with each of you. I know I've said it like five times, but I mean it. This is cool. This is beautiful. This is more than I could have imagined for color and representation with Moxie. I love it. Yeah. I love you all so much. Seriously. Love you find me daily. Love, and you love you back. <laughs> I could just give you all a big group hug right now. Oh my God. <laughs> the hug is in the chat. It's beautiful. The hug is in the chat. I can't I wait for you all to read those comments. You, if, if people are still watching, please like this video. Um, definitely comment when this goes live. Um, share it with a friend. Be an ally, share with a friend. Uh, anything, any money that was raised here, just to reiterate, it is, um, I think, going to uh, the people of color that are here representing uh, with Moxie today and will determine what magical direction it goes to. So, yeah. Moxie's gonna triple what's donated? Wow. Heck yeah, oh, that's the thing you're going to clear your mouth in. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's make a change. Actions mm. happen. <laughs> yeah, and to uh, also add again, uh, just to, and someone can close it out to after me. We do want to make more of these. We do want to talk about this. And we do want to, again, add people who, um, you know, are having, who were the people involved in certain issues that, are bringing up these topics but again this podcast was for us to you know heal to have raw emotion to um talk about what's happening and to hopefully you know have people relate and heal with us too i feel good right now and i hope that hope and love continues after this ditto 100 <laughs> percent. that's you said it agreed <laughs> Well, uh, should we mama ma moxie it or <laughs> let's do it? Line <laughs> <laughs> algorithm by all doing it at the time. Who's, who's gonna count? Yeah. Who's gonna count? <laughs> I mean, the YouTube right now is all of us, so we, we, you know, it might sound demonic when it comes out when they're here, <laughs> but it'll be <laughs> fun. Who cares? Let's do it. Moxie. A three, two, one moxie, maybe <laughs> some bust out speakers. <laughs> we could do one person goes ma, another person goes ma. <laughs> I got like the Brady Bunch. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't. We have too many people for that. Let's just do one, two, three. Okay. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Ma, 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 can we do it? Oh, so bad. <laughs> Moxie. Oh, you knew we were after. doing the mama ma Moxie. Oh, my God. Mama Moxie. Mama Moxie. Down in the chat. There it is. Moxie in color. Thank you, Janet. That's got us Thanks covered. for coming. Got it. Appreciate you. <laughs> Have a good night. That's a wrap. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> good night, sweet dreams, Missy. Sweet dreams, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>